name is Joe Brager, and uh, I was very fortunate to be able to work with a great group of people. I'd like to give some credit to Jim Ellis, Matt Danzinger, Mike Slesher, Jay Branger, um, and I'd also like to recognize Carl Dooley, who I'm pointing to, our Buffalo County Ag agent, who uh, really helped us along and, and getting some of the statistical stuff and, and making sure we're doing things right. Um, the, the idea for working with the malting barley was we're, we're really kind of starting to focus in this area on, on a couple main crops, corn and soybeans. And to kind of get into some diversity um, with the small grains, the small grains will allow us to get some cover crops in. On a farm like ours, we're mostly a dairy operation. It'll give us an opportunity to spread manure, um, possibly in one of the best times of year that we could while we still have growing crops out there. Um, so it just opens up from an environmental standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, some wonderful opportunities. Some of the things that we learned in the process, um, growing barley is, is as intense as any crop. If I think I've learned that in life of farming. If there's any crop you think you can just go out and throw it out there and, and it's going to take care of itself, um, you're going to get what you put into it. And uh, with the barley, we've learned that the fungicide applications need to be timely. Uh, we do have to get them there in order to keep our quality up. We have to be very cognizant of our nitrogen applications. Um, zero is not enough, 100 is way too much. Especially when we're talking about the barley because we need to keep our protein levels low uh, to satisfy the, the brewing industry. And if we start applying too much nitrogen, first of all, we're gonna have maybe too much growth and we're gonna affect that protein content. Um, Following in your rotations, that's another issue when you talk about disease pressures. Following right after a small grain or a corn crop where you have residue out there, not a good choice. We've in the past have grown some wheat, um, tried to get about 20, 30 acres in. Now with the malting barley, we will follow that up. Um, took it off last week, um, which was the, what is to say the beginning of August for somebody listening to this. Um, and our plan is to come back with a mix of clover, rye, and radish. And we will put that on, we'll broadcast that on the field, followed by a light uh, 6,000 gallon manure application to, to get some good soil contact. And if we get that done in the next week here, weather permitting, um, we will have some great soil penetration with those radishes. Um, the clovers will fix some nitrogen for us for the following crop. And of course that rye cover is gonna add a lot of root mass to the soil and hold soil in place for us so that we won't have bare ground. So. In, in our, we're a little more north here, typically cover crops are kind of hard to get on. I'll be experimenting down the road, aerial applications on different crops, stuff like that. But one place you definitely can put a cover crop in and make it work is after small grain. Uh, you know, we all went out and grew our own acres this year, and each one took a little different approach, and each one had a little different outcome. Um, you put on too, might, too much nitrogen, guess what? Just like the plot said, it'll tip over. Um, you know, not hit your fungicide applications right on time, you'll have some disease pressure. So it, it was really neat in the on-farm portion, but then when we actually hit the road and put in a larger scale, um, those two collaborated really well. So just a great opportunity, and again, a lot of credit to uh, Carl and the other farmers in the group.